Good morning, you guys. Welcome to Reframing Wellness. This is the recording of this morning's Zoom call, and my apologies if you are unable to hop on. I did not know that my Zoom account apparently is requiring a passcode with the meeting ID. And so next time we will be sure that that passcode is included along with the meeting ID. But I wanted to go ahead and get the screen recording to you um, and this presentation recording, I should say. So let's dive on into reframing wellness, God's principles for wellness in practical steps. So I'm going to start by sharing a little bit about myself in case you don't know who I am. My name is Amanda Faye Willis. I empower families to wellness authentically through biblically rooted principles. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch today's video. Um, I am a certified beyond organic health coach. I have those um, credentials behind me and I am also currently working through a biblical naturopathic doctor program. So I haven't completed it yet at this time, but I am working through that and absolutely loving what we're learning there. But mostly I am a wife and I am seeking how to best steward the health of my family and Lord willing, our future children. And I have run into a lot of obstacles along my own health journey that have caused me to dive deep and research and actually bring me to a lot of what I am going to share with you today has been found along my own personal health journey when I have dove in for answers and haven't been able to get the answers I was looking for. So through God's grace though, and these principles, uh, I have overcome a lot of things. I hate even using any sort of disease terminology of any kind, but um, for the sake of sharing and so that you know, I've overcome chronic Lyme disease. I've had some major food sensitivity issues and digestive distress I've worked through. And my spine is currently unwinding after years of curvature. Like I said, I hate using words like scoliosis. I just don't like to own disease states, but we'll dive into a little bit more about that and why here soon. Okay. so. Are you ready? Even if you're watching the recording, do you have some coffee or tea with you? I've got my tea here this morning. We are on the Colorado Front Range and here it is pretty chilly. It's sunny today, but still pretty chilly. Um, make sure you have some pen and paper or something to write with. And um, if you have any essential oil with you, I recommend rosemary or clarity. I have already applied my clarity blend and some valor, but I'm going to go ahead and valor up just a little bit more because you can't ever have too much valor in your life, right? All right. So are you ready? Let's dive into the presentation. I have to give a disclaimer. Of course, this information is for the educational, educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, or prevent any disease. I am not a doctor. I'm not giving medical advice. If you're looking for medical advice, please go see your physician. All right. That said, let's define wellness. Now, Many of you are locked out of today's call. And again, my apologies. So I had in the chat box, let me know what comes to mind when you hear the word wellness. But seeing as how you're locked out of the call, you can't tell me in the chat box. So I want you to think for a second, what comes to mind when you hear the word wellness? What's kind of commonly your go-to? I feel like the big paradigm is always wellness is the absence of a disease state. So it's like we hear oh, somebody's really, really healthy. They have no underlying conditions. They have an absence of disease state, um, anything that's defined. But usually the way that we are seeking wellness is that we're searching for treatments um, to overcome a named set of symptoms, whether that's natural treatments or allopathic treatments, we're frequently still searching for treatments. And I wanna challenge our approach to that today. And you'll get into some of the why. Let's continue. So that's that old paradigm. But I want you to remember that you were created to heal. Your body was created to heal. That's how God created us. It's constantly working towards healing. If you cut your finger on something, you don't have to think, oh, what just happened? I cut my finger. Okay. How do I get my body to start healing this cut? 
right? You cut your finger and immediately the blood starts clotting and all these things start happening. You develop a scab eventually and your finger is healing on its own. You're not telling your body what to do. Your body knows what to do. It was created to heal. It was created to move through those processes. Now, sometimes we have things that get in the way of those processes, but the absence of symptoms is not what equals wellness and healing, right? Um, a lot of times actually symptoms can cause healing. Like I said, if we cut our finger, that can bring healing in places. A lot of times fevers are catalysts for healing in the body. So I want you to think instead of thinking of symptoms, being sick and not having symptoms, being well, I want you instead to start reframing that. Start to think of wellness as when you are functioning wholly as God created body, soul, and spirit. And now when I say spirit, obviously I'm talking about your eternal spirit. Our soul would be our mind, our will, our emotions. And then our body is, of course, our physical body, right? And with these, there are, like I said, blockers. These are things that stand in the way of the body's innate healing processes. But then we also have nutrients. And these are things that feed the innate healing process. And we have these for each of the areas, both body, soul, both, I guess, all body, soul, and spirit as we move through. So let's take a look at some of the blockers. Obviously, this is not a complete list. There are plenty more blockers. There will be plenty more nutrients. And we do not have time today because I promised you I would keep this as close to 30 minutes as possible. We do not have time to dump, dive deep into any of these. So I'm just going to touch on them. But moving forward, as we go, come up the next few months, we're going to be doing one wellness call every month with a passcode provided so that you're not locked out. And when you have um, each of those wellness calls, we will be diving a little deeper into some of these areas each time, okay? So we are going to learn more about those. And I will also share at the end of this call some more ways that you can really get resources and be empowered and educated. Okay, so what are some of the blockers with our body? You have poor dietary choices, obviously can be a blocker for healing. If you don't give your body the nutrients it needs, or you give it to something that's too heavy on it, then it has a hard time digesting that. Well, if it can't use those and assimilate those nutrients, or if the nutrients aren't even present in the food to begin with, then that's going to cause problems within the body. A lack of movement. I have heard it said that sitting is the new smoking. And I think that's a super appropriate analogy. We sit so much in our culture today and in front of screens, especially, but just in general, we have, we have a lot of sitting and we were created to be in motion and to be moving. And so we need to make sure that we are not just getting into that object at rest, stay at risk, excuse me, object at rest, stay at rest kind of thing. Like you want to make sure that we are moving. And then neurological blocks. Now this could be something like a subluxation in your spine that's causing a um, disruption in your nervous system. And so if there's something that's off, that's something that maybe a chiropractor needs to fix and help to lift that pressure off of a neurological block. There can be a toxic buildup in your body. This is from things that we have in our air, in our environment, from industry around us, from um, the cleaners, a lot of times that people are bringing into their homes. And then of course, also a lack of sleep. If we do not have enough sleep, our body cannot function. And this is a huge one, especially in our society today. We do not value sleep the way that we used to. And then moving on to blockers, when you were looking at the soul, things like toxic thoughts, broken relationships, unhealed trauma from your past, toxic emotions. The biggest one I see right now is fear. <laughs> fear is all around us. And friends, God did not give us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Amen. And then spirit. So any unrepentant sin or generational issues, this is a touchy subject for a lot of people, but in Deuteronomy, God does talk about the sins that are carried down to the third and the fourth generation. If you've read any of Dr. Caroline Leaf, she is a brain neuroscientist and who is also a believer. And I love what she says that the scientists, some of them are starting to catch up with the Bible. And they have actually proven that 
thought patterns are carried down in your brain for three and four generations. So there are thought patterns that impact us from our grandparents, our great grandparents, and our great great grandparents. And so sometimes it takes things for us to dive into a little deeper from our generations. Now, I want to be very clear that none of these things, nothing that we are talking about today impacts your salvation. None of this is a salvation issue at all. And also at the same time, none of these cause, well, I guess unrepentant sin would be <laughs> disfavored with the Lord, but nothing causes God to love you more. Like you're not earning God's favor. Does that make sense by doing anything that we're going to talk about today or eliminating things? Now there is stewardship principles and we're going to dive into that more, but I just want to be very clear. This is not a health and wealth gospel. This is a stewardship reaping and sowing. Okay. So these are some of the blockers that we have in our environment today, in our world today that can impact us. Then nutrient wise, we have for the body, we're going to look at a lot of, you know, opposites of what we just saw and then some. So things that really feed the body and help those innate healing processes would be unprocessed organic food. Now that does not mean it has to be certified organic in order for it to benefit the body. What I really want to get at here is that we have a whole lot of genetically modified foods on the market, genetically engineered. I'm not talking about hybridized. I'm talking about when they take chromosomes from different animals and different DNA, or even completely different species and just put it into the plant. And that's for things like jellyfish chromosomes into a tomato to make it more shiny. Okay. So these are things that are really messing with God's creation and our bodies don't know how to process them. And then a lot of the herbicides and pesticides that they're using on our foods and around our foods today in conventional growing, they're petroleum based. They have very high toxic chemicals in them that your body does not, cannot process. It was not designed to process. We're not created to need all of that on our food. And so getting back to food, the easiest way I like to say it and think about it is food as close to the way as God created it to be consumed as possible. Okay. So unprocessed, you might do some processing with it at home. Obviously if you're chopping or cooking, that's technically processing. I'm talking about shopping, like the perimeter of the store and even ideally, eventually mostly farmer's markets, growing your own food, that kind of thing. Obviously everybody's on different journeys and at different you know, stages along their journey. And it may just be that you're shopping that perimeter of the store. Fantastic. Avoid all the things in the box with 25 ingredients. Okay. That's what I'm talking about there. And then quality supplements. I put quality in front of there because you cannot go to most stores and pick up a quality supplement if you just go grab something off your box store shelf, you really need supplements specifically for your body. And that's a whole nother thing on how to choose the right supplements, but um, being careful because some supplements actually can be harmful. And so, and some supplements in certain amounts can be harmful. I'm a huge fan of getting your nutrition from your food, but let's be real Our food today. The soil is depleted. Okay. We have done so much monocropping over the years. We've depleted our soil. You add all the radiation coming in from cell phones and EMFs and you know, all the things and our foods just aren't as rich and the transport time and everything. They're not as rich nutrient dense as they used to be. So we need some extra supplementation. Plus we're under more stress than we used to. Like I said, we're not sleeping like we used to do. We are moving like crazy. I'm going to skip ahead to eight to nine hours of sleep moving like crazy. I mean, like next thing, next thing, next thing, not moving our bodies necessarily. We're usually moving and sitting like in the car and sitting, <laughs> we're not walking. So loving movement for your body, but then also eight to nine hours of quality sleep a night. When I said, we're not um, sleeping like we used to, we don't value sleep like we used to. Did you know our ancestors used to sleep 10 and 11 hours a night <laughs> plus? So that was considered a normal night. It would get dark. They didn't have all this artificial light around them, changing their circadian rhythms and making it even possible to be awake the number of hours that we are. So really valuing sleep, fighting for that eight to nine. I will be honest. This is the hardest part for me is sleep. I love to sleep. I sleep well when I sleep. It's just that 
actually shutting my brain off and getting to bed. Usually once I'm in bed, I fall asleep just fine. It's just getting to bed. And so I'm really working to set some more um, habit. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The um, triggers. There we go. Habit triggers in mind so that I can get to bed earlier and really get that quality sleep. And then regular detox, cleansing, fasting. We see lots of um, precedent for fasting in scripture. Obviously, God commanded his people to fast. He expected that they would fast. And the fasting actually allows your digestive system to rest. When your digestive system rests, it allows your systems to actually do cleansing during that time. So like I said, we're exposed to so many environmental toxins around us that taking time to intentionally clean our bodies is super important. We'll be discussing that more on a future call as well. Then sunlight exposure. We were designed to be in the sun. We are so scared of the sun in our culture, but we were designed to be in the sun. Um, so be in the sun as much as you can within reason, don't burn, obviously, but we, our skin and our mitochondria actually thrive when they get, when it gets direct sunlight. When we wear sunglasses, it tricks our body's circadian rhythm. We need that. Don't stare at the sun. Don't hear what I'm not saying. <laughs> don't go outside and stare at the sun in the middle of the day. It's not what I'm saying, but you do need that sunlight exposure without sunglasses for some time in the middle of the day for your body to get all of the blue light from the sun to know, hey, it's the middle of the day. And then in the evening to know, hey, it's time to start winding down. That actually your eyes interact with the sun. Crazy. Isn't it awesome? God's amazing. Okay. And then things like herbs and oils really support the body and give the body extra nutrients. When I say oils, I'm talking about essential oils. There are really good fatty oils too, but that would fall under the food obviously. Okay. Soul wise, let's talk about nutrients for the soul. I'm going to try and move through these a little quicker onto the next slide here, but healthy work, rest rhythms, friends, taking a Sabbath every week, every week. It's one of the top 10 commandments. Again, does not earn you favor with God does not, um, what's, uh, does not affect your salvation at all, but it's God's design that we rest one full day, six days of work, one day of rest. We have kind of a weird, like, I can't do that because we think of two days off with the weekend, but really we were designed to work six days and rest for one. And that may be that Saturday's your day that you do um, all of your household stuff. If you work a nine to five Monday through Friday kind of thing, but, and then Sunday's the day you take off or whatever day it is that you take for your Sabbath. I have found that over the years working through Sabbath, sundown to sundown, it's almost like God knew what he was doing when he commanded that. <laughs> when I tried to take Sunday morning, like go to bed Saturday night, Sunday morning, wake up all day is, you know, off. I do nothing. I go to bed Sunday night, having done nothing. And then wake up Monday morning. I always felt behind. I could never catch up when I started doing Saturday evening, sundown, wind down. And there's preparation on Saturday to get ready for that. And then sundown Sunday coming out of Sabbath, then getting ready for the rest of the week. Game changer for me, friends. Game changer. All right, forgiveness, right? Huge for our soul. True, authentic forgiveness. So important. It's a command in scripture, but it literally impacts your body physically too. A lot of cancers are linked with emotion of bitterness and that they have a root in bitterness. So really just making sure that we are forgiving because we have been forgiven, right? So if Jesus could forgive us for everything, who are we to hold on to anything anyone else has done? Play. It's super important to incorporate play into your days, um, definitely into your week, but try to play and laugh every day. So good for your soul. Obviously scripture meditation. What are you thinking on? Is it good? Is it lovely? Is it pure? Um, or is it just constantly all the things of the world? Are you so engrossed in the world's media and that glorifies all sorts of sin patterns or so engrossed in the news. Now there's an importance to be informed. 
and even being informed and in its right place can feel overwhelming, but really making sure that we're balancing that with scripture meditation and the truth and knowing that we have a solid foundation. Prayer, of course, that's going to overlap into spirit. You're going to have repentance, prayer, worship, spend time in worship. Even while you're doing things around the home, play some worship worship music and sing while you're doing it. It will change your demeanor and all these things are connected. All right, so we're reframing, right? We are reframing. We're not thinking of disease states automatically or the absence of disease state as automatically being well and healthy. No, we're looking at what is this holistic picture here. And so instead of laser focusing on our symptom treatment, what we're going to look at here is I want you to step back and pray first. These are like four steps. If you want to break this down into four steps, how do I reframe my approach to wellness? Here it is. First off, when you notice something in your body, maybe you're not even noticing anything yet, but I'm sure if you actually stop and quiet your heart for a minute and think about your body, you have something, maybe it's a headache, maybe, it, you know, usually all of us have something going on that we're looking to improve. Step back, pray. Before you go and seek anything, step back and pray. Ask the Lord what's standing in the way of proper function and how we can support any healing. Now, if you have, obviously, again, don't hear what I'm not saying. If you have a serious condition that needs medical attention, go get your medical attention. Okay. This is also though, when you're getting that medical attention, you are your best advocate too. And you want to make sure that you don't just blindly follow what a doctor says without understanding it and without testing it and weighing it against what does the Lord say? And is this something that's going to help my body or hurt my body? And those are all things to take into consideration and discuss. If you have a good doctor, a really good doctor will discuss these things with you, will give you informed consent, and you will be able to talk through any treatment, pros and cons, all of those things. So our culture, we kind of have this like, go get your prescription, go fill it. Like no questions asked. I just do what I'm told. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes. And we're created to be part of that process. Right. Um, so ask the doctor what's standing in the way of, ask the doctor. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is why I don't usually go off script. Cause then I get tongue tied. Okay. Step back and pray. Ask the Lord, what is standing in the way of proper function and how can we support any healing? Then remember too, at the same time that symptoms are often healing processes. So like I said, fevers are actually part of a healing process. When you develop a fever, that's your body going after an infection. That's usually a really good thing. And automatically our number one thought is fever, suppress it. But then we don't get well quickly and it takes us forever. So you want to think through what is the healing process that's happening? Is this a danger to my body or is this how my body was created to be? Start asking those kind of questions and um, ask about the check engine lights. Like it's, it's kind of like if your car has a check engine light on and says, you know, low gas. Okay. Low gas is a bad example. Cause if you put gas in the car, it will make it go better. <laughs> um, let's say, I mean, it would be like saying, okay, there's low air and you want the check engine light to go off. And so you're just going to, instead of fixing the air, I guess, yes, you could do the same thing. Instead of adding the gas into the car or the air into the car, you go and you have the computer fixed so that the light stops coming on. Okay. Well, you didn't fix what was causing the light to come on. You just stopped the light from coming on. That doesn't mean anything's going to get better. And in fact, you're probably going to run out of gas and something that's going to happen, right? Or air in your tires, you'll get in a wreck. Those kind of things. So stop just thinking them as a fire to put out, but what, what is it trying to tell you in your body? And then one step at a time, you can look at the blockers and the nutrients and get way overwhelmed. And especially if you're just starting out on this approach to wellness and be like, Whoa, that's way too much. Or you could jump in and be like, that's amazing. And try and do everything at one time. I don't recommend that. Actually, I recommend doing baby steps. It took you a long time to learn your approach and your paradigm to where you're at today and the habits that you have, your nutritional habits, your um, household supplies, everything in your home that is 
on your body, in your body, around your body, um, those have taken years to develop, right? So to just overhaul of all of that in one day is very, very difficult. I liken this to Dave Ramsey's baby, baby steps with financial peace in that baby steps for financial peace, develop that discipline muscle. Same thing here. You develop that discipline muscle. Uh, so I actually recommend taking baby steps, add one nutrient, then eliminate one blocker. When you have that down, you've added one, you've eliminated one. Great. You feel like you're moving forward with that Then then repeat. Okay. So one step at a time and then repeat very easy, simple baby steps, add one nutrient, eliminate a blocker add a nutrient, eliminate a blocker. That will make a huge difference. Every step you take makes a difference. And then as you are adding those nutrients for the innate healing process, eliminate the blockers from the innate healing process, your body will heal. You will start to see things. They may not be in the order that you want it to be, right? So you may be looking for Hey, I want to see weight loss first, or, Hey, I want to see, that's just one I hear all the time in January. <laughs> um, or, Hey, I really want to see improvements in my skin, or I really want to see improvements in energy. Well, your body may have, those are symptoms that some things may be contributing to that, that need to be healed first before you see the result and the fruit of that. So it can take time, but um, they will happen. And not just because, like I said, this is not health and wealth. This isn't, I had enough faith and God healed me. No, this was, I had wisdom and I looked at God's principles. I know that my body is a temple of the Lord. I know that God's pretty particular about what his temple is made out of. He gave Solomon quite a lot of details for the temple building, um, and the finest materials and all the things it's his temple we're stewarding. It's not my temple. It's God's temple. And I'm a steward of that. So when I steward it, well, there's a reaping and sowing of things that happen. Now that doesn't mean that every single time we're going to see full and complete healing, but our bodies are created that way. So what can we do to encourage that and eliminate any, we can only do what we can do. We do live in a simple fallen world. There are some things that we just cannot fix on the side of heaven, but to the best of our abilities, these are the things that make a difference. So what's next after today? I want to provide you with continuing encouragement and education along the journey that this doesn't just end today. You heard a call and you're like, great, awesome. Okay. So what's next? How do you stay constantly learning? I'm still constantly learning. Um, well, I am here to empower you, encourage you, educate you. I have a YouTube and a Rumble channel at Amanda Faye Willis. You can find me both places on your platform of choice. Um, there I post two videos a week. This one is going up there here very shortly. And then I have a newsletter list. If you have not yet jumped on my newsletter list, you can join by grabbing the Pillars of Biblical Health that opt-in will actually have a lot of the scriptural references for some of these things. And it gives a really nice visual of the pillars of biblical health. It dives a little bit deeper into some of them, but um, it's, I tried to keep it also kind of short and sweet. So um, I do do newsletters a couple of times a month is my goal. And you will get some information that way as well. Share what you learned with your friends and family. I have found over the years that whatever God wants me to learn, he has me teach. And when I teach it, I learn it on a deeper level. So we are not given good gifts to keep for ourselves. We are given good gifts to share with other people. We are not meant to be that pond of stagnant water where God pours gifts into us and pours wisdom into us and it just sits with us. No, we're meant to be a fountain, not a fountain, what's the um, analogy of her? a river, there we go, where it flows to us and through us to other people, okay, so not a stagnant pond, but a river, where it flows through us to others and blesses others. We have some future calls coming up. I promise the passcode will be on the graphic going forward <laughs> with each of the calls on February 3rd, which is a Thursday, I'll be doing an everyday oiling class. So we're going to dive into some essential oil stuff. 
um, how to incorporate them into your everyday life. Again, because we're looking to support wellness. We're not looking at, is the oil a treatment? It's not a treatment. That's not how oils are created to work with your body. It's very different. So we'll be talking about everyday oiling on February 3rd. February 16th is love for your immune system. That is also a Wednesday. March 16th is a Wednesday as well. That is spring, spring cleaning for our bodies. All three calls will be at that 1015 Mountain Time, 1215 Eastern, and will be on the same meeting ID and password that is coming. Um, anything else about those calls that I was going to tell you? I think that's it there. Then I had it open for a Q&A, but since you guys are all locked out, I'm very sorry. So whatever questions you have, comment below with those. If you are watching this on YouTube or Rumble, feel free to comment below on this. If you are part of my Young Living team, feel free to send me a text. Um, or if you have my number, you can text me that way. And I'm happy to answer whatever questions you guys have. I pray that this information blesses you and that it blesses your family as well. And yeah, have a fantastic day, friends. I will talk to you soon. Cheers.